this presentation focuses on asset management ratios. This is a continuation of our discussion on financial statement analysis. Now, as of this point, there you go. You should have known the different methods used in financial statement analysis. Dapat kapisa ito na ninyo ito. Now, what is efficiency? This is a company's ability to optimally utilize assets in support of generating revenue or performing a task. In short, how good we are in using our assets to generate revenues or to perform a task. Things that you have to remember when we talk about asset efficiency. Okay, we'll be talking about turnovers and activity. Now, a turnover will consist of two activities. Okay, and what is an activity? Okay, this refers to event, an event or events, okay, when a transaction will be realized. Like, for example, if we are talking about inventory turnover, the two activities involved, or the two events involved, okay, in an inventory turnover will be the first activity, the sales, okay, and the second activity, okay, will be the purchase, or the other way around. You start with the purchase and end up with your sales. Turnovers on accounts receivable, you will have your sales activity, and then you have your collection activity. So those are just some of the examples. So what are the common ratios for asset efficiency? First, you have your inventory turnover, which is normally computed by dividing your sales at the inventory. Now take note, there is a for format here. No? When you hear a turnover, okay, a formula for a turnover, will normally have the respective asset as its denominator. And what is the numerator? It will be the activity wherein you're going to realize okay, the revenue or expense. And in this case, your inventory okay, is used to generate sales. So the best formula will be the activity, your sales, divided by the inventory. But take note, your inventory is stated at cost, while your sales is stated, okay, it's stated in, in a value, okay, that includes the markup. Ah, ayun. So, a better formula will be your cost of sales divided by your inventory. Now, both items are reflected at cost. But if you remember our discussion last time, Every time you divide a nominal account with a real account, you have to get the average of the real account. Thus, a better formula will be cost of sale divided by your average inventory. Now, you have the same concept, no? which is applicable to accounts receivable turnover. Since this is a receivable, okay, so that's the asset, that will be your denominator while your numerator will be the activity okay the relevant activity pertaining to the realization of your accounts receivable okay, in this case you have your sales so you have sales divided by ar but then okay not all of your sales okay will go to your accounts receivable some of your sales can be realized in cash agad no so what do you do okay a better formula for this will be credit sales divided by accounts receivable. And again, if you try to look at your formula, this one is a nominal account and this one is a real account. So, a better formula will be to use the average accounts receivable. You apply the same approach to your accounts payable. Accounts payable being your denominator and okay, purchases as the activity that affects your accounts payable okay but then again not all of your purchases are made on account so to be specific you use your credit purchases and those are now your formula for the most commonly used ratios for asset efficiency your inventory turnover and accounts 
receivable turnover, okay, pertain to asset turnover. So, you want this to be as fast as possible, okay? While your account's payable turnover pertains to, uh, to a liability, you want this to be as slow as possible. If you remember our earlier discussion on on the relationship of these accounts, let's use the pen. Okay, let's use the pen and let's try to use a yellow. And let's just review, okay? You have here your cash, which is used to purchase what? Your inventory, okay? Your inventory, you want to sell that, sell that as soon as possible and convert that back to cash. This is the reason why you want your inventory turnover to be fast, okay? Your inventory, sometimes it's sold on account, so it will become AR, and eventually you will collect this, okay? So those are the activities. Can you see the activities? Purchase and sale. For AR, sales and collection. You want to speed this cycle no, or these processes so that your cash will increase. Your accounts payable on the other hand okay, will be used to satisfy inventory requirement if there is no enough cash to support your inventory requirements. Okay, And then cash will be used to pay for your accounts payable. There you go. And as much as possible, you want to slow down this part, this disbursement uh, portion of this cycle. Okay? So, let's continue. If you try to look at these turnovers, okay, they can also be measured in terms of days. Because initially, this will be expressed as number of times per period. So, for example, your inventory turnover after applying this formula, you'll be able to compute, let's say, 10 times. Okay? This means that in one year, you were able to buy and sell, let's do activities, okay, for one turnover, buy and sell your 10 times no, of your inventories. For accounts receivable, on the average, let's say you have 12x. In one year, you were able to sell and collect 12 times of your accounts receivable. Anyway, and if this one is, let's say you have 6 times in a year, on the average, you were able to purchase an account and pay that account 6 times in 1 year. Now, if we are going to reflect this into number of days in a year, you now have the following ratios. Okay, so let's review earlier. Your inventory turnover is 10 times. How do I write 10 times? 10 times in a year. So if we are using 360 days, or you can use 365, okay, in this case, we just want our computations to be easy. Okay, 360 divided by your inventory turnover, which is 10, you will have 36 days. So on the average, it takes you 36 days okay, to sell what you have purchased. So that is 36 days. Of course, the shorter, the better. Your turnovers, you want them to be faster. Your sales period, you want it to be shorter. Your accounts receivable earlier in our discussion, it's 12 times. Now, if you try to measure that in terms of days, you have the following formula. 360 divided by 12 will have 30 days. On the average, it takes you 30 days to collect what you have sold on account. Okay? Okay. Now, what about your accounts payable turnover? Your accounts payable turnover earlier, it's six times. Yeah. Just an example. So if you divide 360 by 6, okay, your payment period is 60 days. Uh, basically, this is favorable. 
pi because your payment period is longer than your sales period and collection period. Okay? Ah, yan. 60 days. Let me just finish writing this with my mouse. Ayun. Okay. Now, let's talk about this 360. The common question that I get is, sir, can we use 360 pi? Now, take note, it doesn't really matter whether it's 360 or 365. What matters is that you are consistent. If you started using 360, then you use 360. If you wanted to use 365 to be more accurate, then you can use 365. Okay, the issue is whether you're going to use 360 versus 365 or the normal operating days. Okay. This one is better. So in one year, if you only operated, let's say, 250 days, you should use 250 days in all your ratios. Okay? There you go. So let's go back to this formula. Actually, you can put this all together. Hmm? How? By having another formula, which is your operating cycle. Okay, your operating cycle is actually the total of your sales period and your collection period. Okay? And then once you have your operating cycle, you can again use that you know, to compute for your cash conversion cycle. Okay, let's try to review. Okay. Your from the point of purchase up to the date of sale, that is actually measured by your sales period. And from the date of sale up to the date of collection, that is measured in terms of collection period. Now, from the date of purchase up to the date of payment, okay, that is what you call your, oh, by the way, if you add the two, you get the operating cycle. As much as possible, you want to have a shorter operating cycle. Yeah. So that your cash will be realized okay, from your sales. The shorter the operating cycle, the sooner you'll be able to realize your sales, not back to cash. Anyway, to continue, from the date of purchase up to the date of payment, you have your payment period. And from the date of payment up to the date of collection, that's now your cash conversion cycle. Okay? So let's try to fill in the blanks. Earlier, we computed for our sales period and that is 36 days 36 days let me write that down okay while the collection period is 30 days so if you are asked to compute how much is your operating cycle your operating cycle is 66 days so it takes you 66 days okay, on the average to realize your sales into cash Okay, if your payment period was collect, uh, it was computed earlier. If your payment period is sixty days, tada, yeah. You deduct that. So if operating cycle is, I'm sorry, if your operating cycle is sixty six days, and your payment period is sixty days, you will get. A cash conversion cycle of six days. What is your cash conversion cycle? This is actually a favorite, no? Because in finance, action number three, cash not profits is king. Okay, your six days, okay, is actually the number of days from the date of payment up to the date of collection. Or, on the average, how many days will it take you to collect the cash that you have paid? Okay, so from outflow to inflow. And the shorter, the better. Why do we want to have a shorter cash conversion cycle? This means that, okay, well, if you have a shorter cash conversion cycle, this will allow you to have the same level of operations, but lower cash requirement okay so if you're going to compare two companies okay assuming they have the same size 
same level of operation, same market, everything the same, except for company A that has a shorter cash conversion cycle. Okay, if company A has a shorter cash conversion cycle, company A will require less cash to support its operations. Which means, if they have the same level of cash, company A will have more cash available for other purposes, like, let's say, investing. Okay? So, that's the importance of knowing your cash conversion cycle. But wait, there's more. Okay? After knowing that your operating cycle is 66 days, and your payment period is 60 days, you can actually go and compute no, or look for, you can actually look for a supplier which will give you or willing to extend no, credit for more than 60 days. Let's assume that there is a supplier who's willing to extend credit up to 80 days. What will happen to your cash conversion cycle? In this case, okay, if your date of purchase, no, if the date of purchase up to the date of payment is 80 days, 80 days, and your operating cycle is 66 days, this means that you have a negative cash conversion cycle of 14 days. And this one is favorable. Why? Because this time, your cash conversion cycle starts from the point of collection and ends at the point of payment. This means that having a negative cash conversion cycle is as good as using other people's money. Imagine starting your operations with collections and ending with payment. Not like the earlier slide, okay, wherein the payment comes before the collection. Okay, and that's for asset efficiency. Thank you.